Oh, you lovely lot. Oh God, I hadn't actually realised how dark my roots are looking. Let me use some of my dry shampoo. I'm sure I've I'm sure I've mentioned this before. This is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo, which I used wrongly, because I didn't read the instructions. Rubbished about that. Used it in, in the wrong way uh, for the first few times that I used it. I just thought, I don't really understand. It's like the worst dry shampoo I've ever used. It's so white. Bear with. Um, you leave it, it says wait for 30 seconds. So you just go about your business and um, I'm not sure what happens in 30 seconds. I'm assuming it just absorbs all the oil. You can obviously use a little bit more, but just for the purpose of this film, um, I will just do it in the area that you can see. And then after 30 seconds, you rub it in and your hair feels so much lighter. And you know, we can't bother to wash our hair that often all the time, can we? Um, so it is an absolute lifesaver. So I'll just do it now, rub it in, completely disappears. And then it just feels like silk again. It's extraordinary. Anyway, that's an added extra I didn't think that I'd be talking about in this video. <laughs> right, let's get to this beautiful autumn makeup that I'm going to create for you. I've got my back to school grey jumper on and I'm going to first of all talk to you about your SPF just because I thought this is a time where some of us may have bought a lovely new SPF um, for our face. We've used it over the holidays if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. Um, and then you might just think, oh, I don't need it. Honestly, please, please, please try and apply SPF every single day. Now, a company that I've used and recommended to you guys and I have codes for is Dermatica. Very excited to say that Dermatica have now just launched and developed their own SPF, which is really, really important because they're a brand that use lots and lots of actives. If you don't know about Dermatica, I've got links below and I've also got two codes. And the reason why I've worked with them for a number of years is because it's brilliant. It's a bespoke um, service. They have a team of dermatologists. You put in the issues of your skin's needs online. You take photographs, get sent off, and they send you the correct active ingredients for your needs. I've used it myself. I've used it for my children. I've used it and shared it with countless friends. Just to say that. Sorry if I've waxed on because I know I've said about this before. But anyway, this is their new SPF. SPF 50 Photo Damage Defense Sunscreen. Again, what would you expect from it? You'd expect it to be really lightweight, um, possibly like a serum texture, which it is. It sits beautifully mm, on the skin, no fragrance whatsoever. I'd use two pumps of this, especially around all the areas where I've got all my damage. I'm probably a bit late now, but if you're young and you're watching this every day. But the most important thing the massacre want you to do is they want you to repair your skin at night with all their active ingredients depending on your skin's needs and then in the morning protect it with your SPF. You've just got to kind of get used to that routine because it will just really really help prolong the beautiful texture of your skin going forward and obviously protect it from the UVA and UVB um, skin uh, sun rays. Um, it's broad spectrum, obviously, because it protects from UVA and UVB. Anyway, it's a really nice texture. It's $15.95. Um, there is a code down below, which is Caroline B for 20% off the actual product. And then if you've never tried this whole Dometica experience, then I encourage you to do that. It's £2.90 for the first month. And then I think it's 20% off after that. Anyway, all the details are below. So start with an SPF that works really well with your makeup. That's key. It doesn't feel heavy. There's no white cast all the tick boxes. Right, so just for a little bit of colour um, excitement, these are the kind of shades that I'm going to use with the favourite lipstick that I talked about last week, um, but I've really enjoyed the texture and the longevity of. Um, what shall I start with? Which base? Right, I think I'm going to use a little bit of Hourglass taken straight out of my makeup bag because actually I hadn't thought about what base I'm going to use. So I had the NARS one last week, which was um, really light, reflective, beautiful and fresh. And then I went to work the other day and I thought, oh, I just don't wanna be fiddling around. I want something that's kind of just gonna give me a nice skin. So I've gone for Ambient Soft Glow Hourglass. Now this is shade 5.5. And when I say nice skin, sometimes at work, I don't know, I keep my makeup really quite simple. Um, and I just want to have an even 
colour to my skin and because this isn't so glowy or light reflective because usually um, the kind of places that I work in are quite warm because we're usually around lots of lights whether that's lights that I've bought myself or lights um, in a studio or maybe we're tucked in a little bathroom in a hotel or something I always get a bit hot so um, the reason I chose this um, foundation to go to work with is it's because it's mad. I didn't need any extra shine is what I'm trying to say and not that I'm trying to tell you to go and get lots of different foundations for lots of different um, environments. Of course I'm a makeup artist so I love textures and I carry sort of four or five different um, foundations with me especially if I don't know somebody because I need to sort of work out what their skin type is. You know some people's skin just eats makeup and you just can't keep makeup on their face quick enough and then some people you put makeup on and it kind of reads really really quickly and looks heavy so it's nice to have options I suppose is what I'm saying anyway this is a really really lovely base a little bit like um the sort of Shiseido self-refreshing makeup and the NARS soft matte that kind of texture, like I have confidence that it lasts, it's not too heavy, it's not heavy at all, but you know, you need the tiny, that was one little tiny pump I put on my hand and that's pretty much spread all around my complexion and just evened it out without the kind of use of any heavy concealers or anything else on my face, again, because you want to be light with it. I'm probably gonna go back to my current concealer, which I'm still plowing through the one I used last week, which is the Beauty Pie one. If I can find that, one second. It's just over here. Um, again, because it's nice and light, quite like the shade and it um, lasts well, but sorry to be boring and just use the same one again. But as I've said many times with my um, videos, I try to be as genuine as possible and authentic as possible. And that's why it's important to kind of teach um, about application and tricks. So it's not just new product, new product, new product, because there's just no way that you can really kind of trial and test these products unless you're literally wearing about different, five different looks a day going about your business. And it's just, I don't know, it's just not real, is it? So when I find products that really work, I will always mention them to you. And sometimes I might be repetitive about things, but you know that when I say, this is great, um, it's a genuine top tip, which is hard to get clarification on these things these days, I think. Right, so there we are, simple, simple skin. Um, I'm going to show you one new mascara by Vive, and I'm very excited to share this with you. I love it, it's like the hourglass gold packaging, there's just something so decadent and gorgeous about it. I was going to do like a back to school sort of first day at work makeup with my white shirt <laughs> and grey jumper, but I've decided not to felt like it needs to be just a little bit more fabulous. Um, so let's start with the um, Jewel Ended Longwear Cream Eyeshadow Stick from Bobbi Brown and it's russeted pink and cinnamon so it's kind of like two names. Let's just stop looking down and reading and just show you. I do love a double-ended product. Sometimes you just want it a bit lighter, sometimes you want it a little bit darker and this is really soft and flattering and perfect for this time of year works on all skin tones. I'm going to start just really softly and then build up. So this is the rosy shade and I'm just going to blend that over my lid. Not too much, just backwards and forwards. Again just going back with the nib and using that as a liner so that you get that nice intense shadow there and a little bit just in that corner just over the tear duct, you get a nice wash and then pull it up under my brow so I get quite a bit of warmth so that my skin underneath my eyebrow has got a little bit of a hue to it if you can compare it to the other, di other eye and that kind of knocks back the sort of um, skin that's a little bit heavier over my lid. Very creamy these um, pencils, these crayons Bobby Brown's always been good at this. I don't know how the formulation works now without actual Bobby at the helm. Um, but these are very satisfying to use. Nice and creamy. I mean, I think I use sort of creams more than I use 
pale, doesn't it? Doesn't it funny? We all go through phases, I suppose, don't we? But I like using my fingers and the textures are so soft and it just really works more in synergy, I think, as your skin gets older and, and, and softer and it's got more movement in it. It's quite nice to just, you know, use the creamy textures. So that's settled in a bit. So I want to get a little bit more of a pop and that's really kind of bringing out the green in my eyes as well, which is nice. Just put that under there. Okay, a little bit there. Good. Okay, so let's go in with the darker shade. Now with the darker shade, I'm going to try and push back this socket just keep it wide so I'm just gonna do it almost like a half well not a half banana a banana half moon and then blend it in I don't really want to do it on the outside the reason I don't really want to focus too much on the outside of my eye is because the lip is going to be quite strong and if I'm taking it on the outside of my eye it's sort of going to make my eye a little bit more feline and a bit sort of more made up and I don't really want it to look like that I just wanted to add a bit of lift to my eye so this is a clean brush and what I might do is actually take a little bit of my concealer on the back of my hand with this clean brush because to me it's collapsed a little bit here my skin does so yeah, I just want to use that little bit of light that makes all the difference and that helps lift that eye around. Let's re-blend. Mm, this is a nice brush, Ilya. Nice and soft. Oh, so, oh, that's better. Yeah, that's very nice. Okay, so let's go back in and blend that. And is it still blendable? Have I not I haven't missed the boat with that, have I? Okay, and then let's take this one and bring it in because I don't want it to spread more. And then I'll do the correction maybe with the... See, that's fallen down a bit there. I usually have um, a little bit of Botox just in my uh, brows here, not on my forehead because it's so big. I had, I have had it. <laughs> if you look back in my film, sort of like four years ago, five years, it looked ridiculous. I decided it wasn't for me. Um, but... It's quite nice because it just gives a little bit of lift when I have it done, but I haven't had it done for about six months, but I'm deciding whether to have a little bit more or not. Can't decide. You know, some days you feel all right by yourself and then some days you think, oh no, I just need a little bit of a lift. And you get around in circles. Uh, right, so. Good, okay. So I cape back with my concealer, tiny little brush. And then I think this side needs to go a bit higher. Whereas the green, I focus much on the lid and the socket, but it's quite nice to get that soft diffuse finish because I'm going to put the mascara on the top and bottom lashes. It's all very subtle, but you can see it really brings out the whole shape of my eye, but it's still very, very soft. No magic happens until you put the mascara on. Let's have a little look. Okay, so this is Vives. Modern Mascara. Really love her Modern Concealers, I think. Um, really beautiful brand. And her uh, bronzing balms, as you know, in the summer, really nice. So I tried this mascara and it delivers the most beautiful, soft, fluffy lashes. Not like the lashes um, that I would normally go to, like if I put on the Urban Decay or the Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes. They, they are great, sort of instant fat lashes for me and my lashes can take that off and I, and I quite like that effect. So I put this on and I was like, oh, okay, well I was just sort of expecting a little bit more if I'm honest. But then I got the magic on the second coat. Um, so I'll do the top ones first and go to the bottom and then come back for that. It's the brush. So a sort of twisted brush. It's got a little bit of a dip in the middle um, but it really um, slices through the lashes, yet it deposits lots of mascara on. 
so you get a really nice smooth fan like effect as you can see that's just a nice mascara it's not like too much I kind of went like a little bit of American there I don't know why uh, <laughs> I don't know why um, now using the tip backwards and forwards uh, another great thing is it didn't move it stayed beautifully put on my eyes and because I tend to wear lots of you know creamy concealers and pow uh, creamy concealers and I don't really use a lot of powder under my eyes because my skin would look really dehydrated and overly made up for my taste it's always sort of quite a damp area under my eye so if the mascara as well as tubing mascara so much um, just bleeds everywhere you know bleeds the mascara dilutes under my eyes and just get there's a black under my eyes and I just think that's a makeup artist maybe I shouldn't go look like a panda but sometimes I do and there you go um, sometimes you don't look at yourself in the mirror for about six hours do you then you're like oh gee whiz <laughs> right so the lower lashes are fine so let's just go in I'll show you how they look after second coat oh excuse the nose blob Mm. Really, really looks like I've got some demi wispy false eyelashes on. Different, completely different to the e.l.f. that I had on last week where it was individually coated with mascara. Um, this just makes them really soft and fluffy looking. Which is really pretty with this kind of look. Funny, isn't it? I mean, maybe to most of you, you're thinking, what on earth is she going on about? It looks just exactly like the same. And some of you will be like, yep, I know exactly what you mean. Also depends on our own personal taste and the lashes that we've been blessed with. So, you know, different mascaras work very differently for, for any of us. But I really love Jamie, who is the founder and brand owner of Vive, um, because she's got a lot of experience with women, different faces. She used to work on counters, so she had all that experience. Well, I think if you just come from an art background or a film background, you don't, obviously you're working on characters and um, actresses and stuff, but you're not really getting that feedback or like going through so many different types of people so rapidly in one day. So, you know, it's a, it's a really great training if you're going to launch your own brand. Anyway, I'm going off again on a tangent. Um, so let's try, I think I need a bit of warmth. Let's go in with a bit of Ree's bronzer. Lovely Ree. Do many of you follow Ree? She's um, a really lovely lady, um, a UK beauty blogger. And actually when I say beauty blogger, I don't sort of mean that sort of just like, you know, in general terms, she really was one of the first people um, to start writing about makeup. Um, and basically giving the lowdown on new products and you know she was sort of like the oracle of beauty Ooh, look at that it's gonna take off with those cheekbones um, and really lovely lady this is her bronzer I think I used it before um, so I've used this very dense Bobbi Brown brush which I love with the bronzer and as you can see because it's a dense brush it's deposited lots of bronzer on my skin I I'm not bothered about that it's fine it's a really beautiful cream product just again taking the excess off and I'll just blend it back into the rest of my face and actually spread it around the perimeter of my face into the T-zone. It spreads really well, but you want to just keep the nice lightness under your eyes and bring that round a little bit over the nose for that kind of warmth. Oh, look at that. That is really, really yummy and soft. What a transformation to how I looked when I switched the camera on. Let me just do a little bit of more blending. I love the dark one there, but that's also quite nice. This red is going to look really super punchy. Mm -hmm. This is a L'Oreal lipstick um, and it's shade 200 and it's called Intense Volume Matte. I'm not going to use this lipstick, there it is. Um, 
full on. I'm going to apply it, but then I'm going to really, really soften it down because I want it to be almost just like um, a soft stain, not like a really strong lip. Oh, and before I do that, I do love to use a little bit of hyaluronic before. Now, I haven't got my B5 hyaluronic um, La Roche-Posay serum, but I'm just using the eye serum, but it's very similar. Well, they'd probably disagree, but it has the same effect. This is just around the eyes, but it's the lovely hyaluronic molecules that I want on my lip. Um, because when I'm using a slightly softer, more velvety lipstick, it's quite nice to have that just a little bit of bounce in my lip before I put that on, whereas I don't have it sort of naturally as I did back in the day or when, you know, your eyes feel, uh, your lips feel a little bit dry because you've been wearing lipstick. It's just quite nice to add a little bit more of a boost to your lips without it feeling slimy and slippery with a balm. God. That was a long sentence. I'm just going to tap. I'm just going to get myself a nice Cupid's bow. It's a very premium. Texture. Mm. It's really nice with the hyaluronic. Uh -huh. See, nice. Now, squidge that in there. And I'm going to take my brush. This is actually just a, an art brush. I really do like brushes with sharp edges. Just smudge that in. I think it's a really lovely look. It's a really lovely warm orangey red. What was that? The tissue. And just mat it down so it becomes like a stain. And oh, maybe I'll just turn my hair back. No, just keep it down. That's fine. And that's this week's look. <laughs> I don't know what to call her. <laughs> Um, I'll let you call her. Oh, maybe we should do that. The makeups I do, can you give them all names? Not like Genevieve or Jennifer or Sally, but like something else. What's this girl called? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> have a lovely week, everyone. See you very soon. Bye.